Hey everyone, Leo Bond here. I'm back again today for the Best Buy Canada blog, and this time I've got two more telescopes to review. This time they're both Celestron models. First, I have the Celestron Power Seeker 70 EQ Refractor Telescope, so it's a light bender. And then I also have the Celestron 21063 Astromaster 90 AZ Refractor Telescope, so another refractor or light bender this time. And this particular one, the second one, has a, a 90 millimeter uh, lens diameter with a 1000 millimeter focal length. So a pretty good size one. But let's go with the uh, power seeker here first. And I'm just gonna go through a few of its uh, main features and tell you a little bit about what it was like to use it. So this particular one has a 700 millimeter focal length and a 70 millimeter diameter of the lens. And so it's a little bit smaller than the second one that I'm going to look at, but it's also the heavier one of the two. It's got quite a few additional bits and pieces. For example, it's got an equatorial mount, and that's a contraption that allows you to follow the rotation of the sky overhead. Uh, basically, it keeps one axis of the telescope rotating parallel with the Earth's uh, rotation. It's kind of complicated to explain, but fairly straightforward to use, although it is rather heavy. It's a nice uh, solid part. Now, this particular telescope also comes with fully coated glass optics. It's got an accessory tray that goes in the tripod. Of course, it has a tripod too. Uh, now the tripod on this is extremely light. Uh, I'm almost worried it kind of feels a little bit flimsy, but the rest of the telescope that sits atop the, the tripod is very solid. It's probably the most solid one that I've, uh, that I've had. I've had four of these now, and it's very heavy, uh, even though it's probably the smallest one out of the four as well. Anyway, it's also got some software that comes with it to help you find different uh, objects in the sky to look at. And of course, it's got the little uh, Starfinder scope on the side there that allows you to uh, easily line things up. Now, this particular one is good for both terrestrial and space objects. So you can look at the moon or uh, the planets, Jupiter and whatnot. Um, I do find that uh, these particular telescopes, all of them, you can see stuff like Saturn, but Saturn's getting out there a little ways. And so I had trouble making out the rings. It's a little bit fuzzy. And really, if you want to be able to take pictures, uh, you're going to either need some kind of a camera that mounts onto the, uh, to the eyepiece section, or you're going to have to just take pictures of the moon. Uh, trying to use a camera like a phone camera, you can do it. You can get pictures of the moon, but it's very hard to to hold yourself, uh, you know, your hands steady with the phone or whatever. Now, the bigger of the two telescopes, the Astromaster, this one does have, like I say, a slightly bigger uh, lens diameter. It's got 90 millimeters and it's got a 1000 millimeter focal length. And it's got a few other features as well, but it doesn't have quite as much going on as the Power Seeker. For example, it doesn't have that uh, equatorial mount. Uh, things that it does have include a permanently mounted star pointer. So again, for finding what you're looking at, uh, it's got a uh, tripod. This particular tripod is a little bit more solid, I think, than on the Power Seeker. Uh, it definitely felt that way to me. It too has all coated glass optics that give you a nice clear image. And uh, I actually assembled this one quite a bit faster than the Power Seeker. While the Power Seeker took maybe 15 minutes to put together because there's a few extra bits and pieces, including, uh, like I say, that equatorial mount and the weight, uh, the counterweight and everything. It does take a little bit of time to get that one together. 15 minutes, though, is not bad. But the Astromaster probably only took about five minutes to put together. It was really quick, really easy. And uh, even though it's the bigger telescope of the two, it was quite light, uh, very easy to uh, kind of cart around, except it is big. So uh, I don't know how far you're gonna necessarily wanna take it. Now, I personally had it uh, over on Vancouver Island and used it over there to look at uh, nearly full moon, like 98% full or whatever. And it was amazing, uh, the views that we got with it. Uh, I couldn't get any pictures, <laughs> but uh, it really looked nice. You could see the craters and uh, the shadows along the edge where, the, where you're kind of getting to the dark side and everything. So it was a lot of fun to use. Uh, we also lined up Jupiter. We were able to see three of the moons of Jupiter. Presumably the fourth one was either uh, in front or behind Jupiter. 
But one way or another, these telescopes are both a lot of fun. Uh, I would say they're great for anybody that is just kind of getting started uh, as a hobbyist, we'll say, in astronomy. Or even any young person, uh, maybe like a high school age person that is thinking about possibly going into astronomy when they go off to university and they just want to you know, have a telescope to, to start in learning all about this stuff. It is a lot of fun. They're fairly easy to use. Like I say, not too hard to set up. Uh, I definitely recommend them. I don't know which one really that I would pick. I mean, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Uh, the equatorial mount is a great advantage of the power seeker, but the Astromaster is the one with you know slightly more power as far as what you can what you can see. So not that it's a huge difference, but it is, a, you know, somewhat of a difference. So anyway, I guess you have to kind of decide which features sort of mean the most to you. And of course, Best Buy does have several other uh, Celestron telescope models. And so there's really something out there for everybody. And they're not uh, terribly expensive, really, I must say, for what all you get. There is a whole lot going on with these. Uh, and like I say, the software, too, is, is nice to have. You can learn an awful lot about uh, what's up there. So anyway, that's all I've got to say about these telescopes for today. I hope what I've said here uh, encourages you to maybe take a look into telescopes and hopefully it all made sense. Some of this stuff is a little bit technical and I'm not too sure that I'm uh, you know, great at explaining it. But anyway, they're a lot of fun. I can definitely tell you that. And uh, yeah, I, I really had a blast. I had showed some family members and stuff, uh, Jupiter and and the moon and everything and they really enjoyed that so very very cool uh, definitely something that maybe everybody should consider having at least some telescope uh, in their home for uh, for hobby use anyway that's all for now thank you for watching do check out the complete written review over at the best buy canada blog for more uh, details and information especially the technical stuff uh, with these telescopes and what they each come with and that's it for now thanks for watching